this episode we'd like to give you some tips and tricks to reach your valves on your twin set. Um, join me and I'll explain you all the ins and outs on how to reach your valves on your twin sets. It's a much discussed topic on the internet and it's actually quite simpler than you think and the solution is somewhere completely different than you might ex expect. Well here we have the famous twin set. So before we jump in, let's, uh, let's first talk about the configuration of a twin set. Then I'll show you some stretching exercises to make your shoulders and your arms and your back a little bit more flexible. And then we'll get right to the nitty gritty and see how we can combine the correct setup of you, the correct setup of your tanks, the correct setup of your harness, your position in the water, and we'll get you reaching your valves in no time. So let's start with the configuration of the tanks. Uh, in this case, it's a steel, uh, two steel tanks, two steel 12 liter tanks with two bands. Um, as you notice, the top band is right there where the, where the shoulder of the valve or, or the tank stops. And that's where it should be. Don't get tempted by moving the bands down to get, to get the tanks higher up because it'll only uh, put you in a worse position to reach your valves. It'll make you top heavy. So leave them up here where they are from the get go. They're 11 inch apart. Um, so that way they, fit, they match up with the holes in the back plate. That's an industry standard. The valves obviously um, need to be well lubricated and we prefer uh, this type of manifold where there's actually a, a, a tap going in with two o-rings. I'll put a picture up here somewhere, I think. Um, and as you notice, these uh, two lock nuts, they're not locked. So this manifold, now there's no pressure on this one because it's a brand new set, but uh, when there's pressure or even there, you can move this and it should be like that. Because if you hit this, the chances of this valve breaking are less. And this is actually the only single point failure on a twin set. So that's another topic, but this should be able to move. It's, it's just as airtight, no matter what. So when you got the, uh, the, the, the tank set up correctly, we can look at our, uh, our, our wing, our, our, our back plate set up. Here we can look at uh, two wings, a single tank wing and a double wing. Let's look at the double wing for now. Um, don't be tempted to tighten up these chest straps. Um, these chest straps are there only basically to have two D-rings to attach to and to carry the set on land. Underwater they don't really serve a purpose apart from having a place for those D-rings of course. Because there's actually supposed to be a good amount of space in your shoulder area to, for you to be able to put a, uh, a fist in between the harness and your chest um, when you're just wearing a t-shirt because that way you'll make sure you can easily get in and out of your harness setup. This is all because the stability comes from the waist strap. The waist strap in combi combination with the, uh, with the, um, uh, the crotch strap actually gives the stability on a set. A, bit, a little bit similar to a, a backpack when you're hiking. Um, regarding the, um, the crotch strap, just have that snug, especially when you're going to do a lot of scootering. Uh, when you're going to use some scooters, you're going to have to be sure that it's nice and snug so it doesn't uh, allow for much movement there. Um, and also when the whole setup is, is correct and configured correct, there's no need to open up some buckle and move the set up or something like that. You'll need to be able to reach your valves without undoing your equipment. Right, some stretching exercises to get your shoulders a little bit more flexible. A very good uh, exercise to do is uh, first make sure you can reach your elbow like this. Keep your back as straight as possible and just pull with your left hand, in this case your right shoulder, until you can feel and you can just stretch out the side of your body. Point your elbow all the way to the ceiling as far as you can look up as far as you can, you can feel it stretching here. Go like this, you count to 10. One, two, 
chin. And you s easily let go. <laughs> Release, give it a shake, and then do the other one. So that's a very good question, a very good exercise. The another one is do the same thing, but across your chest. Now it's not an it's not an exercise to make sure you can reach the furthest back. It's an exercise to stretch this out here. So keep your shoulders as straight as possible. Pull it out, and just until there's tension, keep it there for 10 seconds, and slowly release. Then another exercise. Place your hand when you're standing like this at, at roughly 90 degrees and then slowly walk back until you can feel again the stretching here underneath your arm and you can feel a little bit in your chest. There we go. Then another one. Grab your hands behind your back and just push your chest out as far as you can and try to lift your hands up as far as you can. All right, so now we got the configuration sorted of the tanks and of your harness. We give to give you some, uh, we're giving you some some stretching exercises. So get on with that, and then we'll get down to it. Um, when people come to me and say, "Hey, well, I have trouble reaching my valves. I've tried everything. Uh, I've tried moving the set, tightening up, loosening it, moving the the back plate up and down, and all that sort of stuff." Usually the problem is not in the equipment, as always. Um, when I tell them that you cannot reach your valves, it's probably because you cannot really control your modified frog kick. And then they're like, what? What on earth does that have to do with anything? Well, let me tell you, a lot. Let me just grab Woody over there and I'll show you what I mean. Hi everyone, this is Woody, Woody, everyone. This is Woody, a little uh, little doll that's used for, I think, drawing lessons or something. We're using it for scuba lessons. And um, basic, he got injured last week, so excuses, one leg missing. The point is, when your double set, when your twin set is laying on your back here, it's lively. So that means when you reach yourself up, it's going to sag behind, and when you look forward, it's going to fall forward. Just a tiny little bit, but that's enough. Now, also pay attention to Woody's back, it's arched. See? So from his knees to his hips, it's a parallel line to the bottom or surface. And then his back is arched, his chest is forward, and he's looking up, and his hands is in front. Now, if you're diving in a, uh, with a twin set, you're very likely to be diving in a dry suit as well. So there'll be air in your dry suit underneath your shoulders and underneath your feet here. And this is a good thing because that'll actually carry you around. Um, there's other videos on our channel regarding dry suit uh, exercises and trim tips and all that sort of stuff. But this is the way we want to be in, in the prone position. Now, this is what I mean. You need to be able to be proficient with a modified frog kick in able to keep this position. When you start shifting weight, and, and air when you start moving your arms and hands, right? We keep these hands roughly so out in front for balance purposes. So when we start reaching back, we're gonna move stuff. We're gonna move the air in our, in our, uh, around our shoulders here. So when the air moves in our suit, it's gonna have a negative effect or an influence at least in our trim. So when we, when we remove a little bit of air in the front and it moves back, we're gonna to get top heavy. So if you have a good control over your modified frog kick, that means you can use a modified frog kick to push water upwards. Ergo, pushing your torso downwards. So you can counteract that top heavy feeling with a small fin kick called a modified frog kick, where you're just basically kicking with your ankle the water up towards the surface and that keeping you, keeping the lower half of your body down. So that's step one. Make sure you'll be able to stay in trim while reaching backwards. So first exercise, stay in the water, get a fixed position, get a buddy, put up a line, do the front of the anchor line somewhere where you don't float forwards, 
and just all you need to do is put your hand on your head. So when you're laying in the water like this, like Woody, all you need to do is for, go from this position, just put your hand on your head and stay there. Then when you got that, do the other hand, your head. Then when you got that, just see if you can just reach as far back as you can. Just don't worry about reaching the valves. It's all about the reaction of your body when you're moving your limbs underwater. So stay in the same position, focus on the same position, just move your hand as far back as you can. Don't worry about reaching the valves, don't reach for them, just stick your hand as far back as you can. And stay in the same position. Because the positioning is the most important thing. Why do we do these valve exercises? Is to be able to re react when something goes wrong behind our backs. Now, if you react behind, behind your back, and because of that reaction, you lose completely track of your team, your situational awareness goes down the drain, then what's the point, right? So act, practice that first. Make sure you can stay in trim when your hands are moving all over the place. When we want to reach our valves, we have to think of the valves that are attached to the tanks as something different than our bodies. What do we do when we want to scratch our back? When I reach something that's on my back, I go, I scratch forward and I scratch on my back, right? I'll just pull my shoulders up because that, that way I can get further down my back. And that's because it's me. Tanks on your back are not you. I mean, when you, when you practice a lot, they'll become an extension of you, but they'll never you. So we have to think of, in, a, in a little bit different way. We don't need to reach by scrunching forward because actually what we're doing is we're moving the tanks further back. So that's tip number two. Let's look at the tanks as something different from our, from our bodies. And I'll show you with a rod, a pin or something, if I can find something. Give me a second. Here we go. Now I'm not trying to imitate Conan the Barbarian. I just want to get something to illustrate a straight line that's attached to my back, but it's not part of my back. So look at this straight line. That, that, that's in the position where a double set would be, right? So if I want to reach the tanks, but I think my logistics of reaching something on my back that's attached to my back with me underwater, I'll make this motion. I'll scrouch down and try to reach back. But look at my hand. If I stay in here, this is really the furthest I can get. I cannot reach no matter what I do. I have to stay like Woody, <clears throat> stay with your chest up, looking up, and now all of a sudden it's right here. I don't even have to reach all the way back. I can just touch it because I need to arch my back and chest forward. Now, super important. Stay in trim, because if you let your knees drop and you come out of trim, your set will become heavy and it'll fall down. It'll again hang on the shoulder straps and we don't need that. When we're in the water in trim position, those shoulder straps are actually loose. They're not completely cinched down. So look like this, look up and reach the valves. Sorry. Where were we? All right, so stay like Woody, stay in trim. Use your feet with a modified frog kick to stay in trim and manipulate that air bubble. Think about the tanks as something different than your body. So actually keep that prone position, keep your arch back and reach back. And now we have to know a little bit about the anatomy of our shoulder. Our shoulder is better capable to move backwards if we keep our elbow pointing forwards. So if I make this motion with my elbow forwards, I can reach further back. If I, as I see a lot of people do, trying to reach like this, you're, you're locking your shoulder up here. So don't move like this, but keep your elbow in front and you can reach much, much further back. So the recap, get your setup correct. Don't be too tight on your harness. When you get in the water, make sure everything is in place. And when you reach back towards your valves, make sure you think of the tanks as something different than your body. So they're behind you. Stretch out, stay in trim. 
keep your elbow pointing forward it'll help you with your shoulder and now for a last little tip of the day we get dressed up we're running around in our under under garments and when it's like here in Denmark it's quite cold here in the winter time so there's a lot of our undergarments and it fills up underneath right so what happens is when you're rocking around in your undergarment and your dry suit the undergarment is gonna slowly sag a little bit down now then what happens you walk into the water right and your suit goes to you so it has actually sucked everything down and now completely squeezed it into your body so when you're underwater the first thing you feel is that your undersuit is actually hindering you it's 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 being held in place because the suit even though you push a little bit of air in it it's still squeezed a little bit so what you want to do especially well when wearing thick underwear is get underwater get in trim you can feel the suit is squeezed stretch out your arm as far as it'll go you can actually feel the undersuit and then add a little bit of air because as soon as you put the air in the suit it's going to make a little movement in the suit that allows you to just stretch a little bit out do that for both arms and you'll be much much more you have much more flexibility underwater at the same time you'll see you'll, your set will come from hanging on your shoulders and you can move it a little bit so it's laying on your back and then you're good to go so um, if you have any comments or questions leave a comment down below uh, send us an email with your questions if you want if you have any other tips about how you manage to reach your valves don't be uh, don't be shy to share it underneath as well and if you haven't uh, already give a thumbs up to this video or subscribe to our youtube channel for more content have a nice day out there and uh, keep stretching you can also obviously talk to us about side mount and uh, be rid with that lead valve mumbo jumbo Thank <laughs> you.